anybody comes to Ireland and drives around the shoreline, they'll be saying, where are the fishing boats? They're gone and they're never coming back. It's incumbent on the European Union to look after people such as ourselves. We are an indigenous industry, an indigenous people, our own language, songs, customs, traditions, fears, and we need to be protected. Look what happened with the UK. There is nothing to say that in a few years time, if things get bad enough in Ireland, we could be the next country to look for an exit. Now, I'm not saying that will happen. I'm not saying the fishermen are crying for that to happen. But what I'm saying is, if you keep beating the dog, eventually he'll turn around and bite you. I'm in the small coastal village of Castle Tanbear in County Cork, Ireland. Fishing is the lifeblood of this community. But the industry has been struggling for years, and Brexit was the latest blow that could permanently knock down this fishing fleet. I'm here to meet those struggling to keep their heads above water and understand how the decisions in Dublin, London and Brussels have a direct impact on this remote part of Ireland. This is Daniel, a fisherman who has spent his life at sea. But these days he is mostly staying home with his wife and three children, Robin, Ryan and Jamie. While Daniel once hoped they would carry on the family fishing tradition, which he himself inherited from his father, he now says there is no future in the industry. They can, you know, make up their own decisions, but I certainly wouldn't be pushing them towards the fishing industry anyway. The industry just isn't in a very good place at the moment. It's, um, it's on a slippery slope and we just don't know where it's going to stop. Eight minus six. Quotas have been cut year on year. There's very, very little. Um, increase in, in quotas, it's just down and down and down, especially since Brexit. Three years ago, the United Kingdom officially left the European Union and regained control of its rich fishing waters. Under the post-Brexit Trade and Cooperation Agreement that started in 2021, Europeans must gradually transfer part of their quota shares for certain fish stocks to the UK. Ireland is one of the worst affected countries by these cuts. According to a government study, by 2025, Irish vessels will lose 15% of their quotas, which amounts to a projected annual loss of 43 million euros. Patrick Murphy, who represents the fishermen in this part of the country, is still fuming over the post-Brexit deal. We've been sacrificed for the trade deal with the UK. They hurt us the hardest on the most critical stocks that we have. One example of that was Irish Sea Herring, where uh, Ireland and England had the quotas. We had 25% of it. They had 75%. After the deal, we have 1%, they have 99%. We're going to suffer in our coastal communities. We're going to see people devastated over this. Generations and generations of people who have fished for maybe 100 years now, there'll be nobody left of that family fishing, like, forced out of the industry that they love. It's, it's just a crime against us, to be honest. Ireland's seafood industry employs around 16,000 people and generates more than 1.2 billion euros per year. But for coastal communities like Castle Tamber, with less than 2,000 residents, fishing is by far the main source of income. The manager of this fisherman's co-op says the post-Brexit quota reductions will ultimately lead to job cuts in the next two years. In this factory, we will probably lose 25, 30% of our staff and that for our community is absolutely disaster. The town is 85% dependent on fishing for our, in, for our survival, and there is no alternative. It's a very beautiful area, we have very poor land, and we only depend on the sea. And we are really disappointed with the European Union that we did not get a fairer deal. We are very proud to be in Europe. But this is absolutely a, a death blow for, for our industry, and it is crazy. It kills our hope. In the summer of 2022, the Irish government, with the help of the EU, set up a scheme to decommission one-third of the country's offshore fishing fleet. The aim is to, quote, restore balance between fishing fleet capacity and available quotas, following the reductions in quotas for stocks arising from the EU-UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement. Of the country's 180 whitefish vessels, 64 have reportedly applied for the scheme, and 19 of those are from Castle Tamber. Alan 
is one of the applicants. He is now waiting for the government's offer before deciding whether to go back at sea or leave his boat tied up forever. This boat now and the boats here next was there. Uh, they've all uh, put in for decommissioning. Uh, nobody knows yet whether they'll be accepted. Uh, nobody knows how much any boat's going to get. Uh, we would all be hoping that we get the market value for our boat and license, but from what we've been told uh, through the grapevine, we won't get that much at all. Nobody has any concrete plan yet because at the end of the day, you have to pay back the bank first. And if you don't have enough to pay the bank, like you're not going to take it, you'll have to try and work away some sort of way. Daniel is facing the same uncertainties, but even if he gets a good decommissioning offer, it seems that his days at sea are mostly behind him. Do you miss them all, Dad? I'm sure they were good times. If the figures are, are okay to cover my mortgage, 100% I'll be take it, but if it doesn't cover the mortgage, I can't be going around for the next 15, 20 years paying a loan with no boat or, do you know, with the, with the crippling crisis of quotas and, and, and diesel at the moment, it's, it's, it's just, I, I just can't see it, see it happening really. For coastal communities in this part of Ireland, the loss of fishing boats has a knock-on effect on a range of other industries, including the one I'm about to visit on Bear Island, which is just a short boat ride away from Castle Tambert. This is Bear Island Boatyard. We have between 15 and 20 people full-time working here. We take in between 40 and 45 vessels a year. 90% of our clients are fishing vessels. So when you hear about decommissioning and taking boats out of the system, it's not so good for us. It's, it's very bad actually because going forward, it knocks the confidence out of the industry. There's great talk about oil and gas and wind and all these things. They're all in the future. We have to live in now. We can't survive waiting for this. So going forward, we're going to have less numbers and we'll have to readjust where we're going. It's not so bad for me, but it's, I can't see anybody else coming into the industry. In the last two years, hundreds of Irish fishermen have taken to the streets of Dublin and other Irish cities, accusing their government of not fighting enough on their behalf. The Irish minister in charge of fishing said that he's doing all he can to secure a better deal for fishermen and has won concessions for some fish stocks. But ultimately, better shares for Ireland will require other European member states to give up some of their quotas. Quotas, the fishermen believe, that have been historically tilted against Ireland ever since it joined the European Union in 1973, exactly half a century ago. The quotas are set on the scientific advice and then that's shared out between the different countries on historic catch records. And unfortunately for Ireland, we didn't have uh, a great historic catch record. We were not a developed country like the others. To explain that, Ireland had enough fish around its own waters, so it didn't have to travel anywhere else, whereas all the other fleets had to come into Irish waters because they had depleted the stocks in their own waters. So of course they were catching more fish in our waters than we were ourselves and also we weren't travelling to their waters so we get nothing in reciprocal um, amounts of fish in comparison to what's taken from our waters. The European Union has consistently defended its common fisheries policy saying it combines productivity with sustainable fishing but the seafood workers here say greater attention should be given to coastal communities. We have to be given some hope by the European Union and I am imploring our leaders, our politicians in Ireland and in Europe to treat Ireland more fairly. We didn't get treated correctly when we joined Europe in fishing. And I think it's time to help us now. Our backs are to the wall. I meet again with Daniel, but this time at his boat. He still comes around on a regular basis for maintenance and cleaning purposes. I asked him what he will do should all of his life's work suddenly end. My life has, is in the sea and that's where I've been all my life and that's where, that's kind of where I enjoy it. Like, you know, I feel at ease. Um, there's just no, there's no proper answer for that, what I'll do after, after, if this boat goes. God only knows what the answer to that one is.